Welcome to Trionic 7, the YouTube channel for Saab enthusiasts. Today I'm working on my Saab 95 Arrow from 2002 in laser red. And the topic of this video is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. That is adding a connection to the car's P bus. P bus stands for power bus and this is the high speed uh, communications bus between the car's internal components. There's also a low speed internal bus called the I bus or instrument bus but that is too slow for us to use when we're gonna tune because this video is the first video on this channel on tuning. Since this car has ESP there's an easy way of adding a connection to the P bus via the steering wheel angle sensor. If you don't have ESP, you can also tap into the main P bus, either here down at the ECU or here at the main wiring harness. The problem is though that you'll be working in the engine bay, which means that you need to make a good connection to the car, which is resistant to moisture and heat and all the external influences in the engine bay. If you damage your internal wiring here or here when working on these cables, your car will be undrivable. Remember, you were working on the main wiring harness of the car, which is very risky if you mess something up. And that's the best thing about tapping into the ESP system instead, because if you mess it up, you might just damage the ESP system and not the actual power bus, the main bus of the car. But with that said, I need to stress that this is by no means an easy job. You will work in a cramped environment and you need to make sure you don't short circuit anything. And still, even though the P-Bus at this point only connects the ESP, I would not want to guess what happens if you are able to short-circuit the P-Bus in any way. You'll probably end up damaging many, many components that are critical to the car. So be very careful and always work with the battery completely disconnected, so there's no power in the system. Around on the forums you'll probably see a lot of different options regarding tapping into your P-Bus. But also the different options of actually making a connection with your computer. Sometimes you see people making an outlet here, or a D sub 9 connector here or somewhere, or a loose cable somewhere in the dashboard or in the glove box. But this solution will be completely invisible. The P-Bus wires we will be hooking up to are green and white. And the cable area, according to the workshop manual, is a half square millimeter. Now I couldn't find such cables in the stores, so instead I had to buy red and black cables with a cable area of uh, 0.75 square millimeters. But this is close enough and should work fine. I always recommend crimping cables instead of soldering if you're working on a car. This type of connector is pretty nice because you connect one wire to this end and two wires to this end. You crimp them together and then you use a heat gun or a soldering iron. And this little connector actually has a bit of glue inside which will melt and then uh, dry again when it's cold. Also this plastic here is a shrink wrap plastic. So using these connectors allows to make a very good waterproof and future-proof connector that won't just break randomly. Begin by using a T25 Torx and loosen one, two, three bolts from the cover and then one and two bolts from the diagnostic port. Then push down on the little plastic tab and then pull the panel out. With the panel out Remove the diagnostic port, you can just pull it through, and then loosen the two connectors to the courtesy light. And then pull the panel away and put it in a dry, safe location. Looking up from under the pedals, we can see the steering column right here, going up to the steering wheel. And here is the connector for the ESP sensor. And the cable will go up. As you can see, there's not, not much slack to work with here today, so we'll have to keep a tight shape around here. Let's see what happens if we disconnect this connector. 
To loosen, you press these two clips together and pull it out. It's very simple. Turn on the ignition. And as you can see, the ESP warning light here stays on because the ESP system detects a fault. Since it's very cramped, you will have a hard time seeing what you're doing. So I'd recommend pulling the fuse cover and peeking into here. I can't show it on video, but if you do this trick, you'll actually be able to see what happens here on the inside. Okay, here we are. I was able to cut the green and yellow, sorry, green and white wires and uh, was able to get the strands out. This took some time because it's very cramped in here. Uh, but just be patient and don't mess things up here. And here we are. The green wire has been spliced onto a red wire and the white wire has been spliced onto a black wire. So basically I chose complementary colors here. <laughs> well the splices are done and they look good. So I'm now gonna repower the car and try everything out, see how it works. The connector is back to the steering wheel sensor. The ignition is on and there's no ESP warning. So everything is connected back just the way it should. This is excellent. Now we can move on to part two. And now you'll need some cable shoes. The part number for Saab is 4466801. And it's these little cable shoes here. These will go onto the cable ends and onto the OBD2 connector. So the pins you see in here are those cable shoes that I just showed you. We will connect CAN plus, which is the green wire going to the red wire, to this point. And then we connect CAN minus, to, which goes to the white wire that has been spliced onto a black wire, here. Next, cut the black and red wire to the correct lengths. You don't want to make them too long because that might interfere with the cables and the bus communication. But you don't want to make them too short either because you want to be able to move it with the OBD connector and also have some margin if you need to redo the cable ends. And this is what the crimped together connection looks like. Next, twist the cables so that they form a twisted pair. This is needed to minimize interference with other electrical equipment. And here's the finished product, an OBD port with added CAN plus and CAN minus wires. It's also a good idea to connect your ODB2 adapter just to check that everything is working. Connect it, connect it to your phone and start the car and make sure everything looks fine. After putting it all back together, the panel and the light and everything, this is how it looks. And now that we're done, the last thing we need is an OBD to D sub 9 cable. I don't have mine yet, but I've ordered one from eBay and it will be arriving in the next few weeks. I also need a CAN USB adapter or something like John C's combi adapter. But since I don't have them at the moment, I can't test this connection right now, but I'm pretty sure everything is working fine. Alright then, this was the first tuning related video on this channel, Trionic 7, the YouTube channel for Saab enthusiasts. If you like this video, be sure to stay updated and keep in touch. We're on social media, Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, etc. Be sure to leave a comment if you need any help, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.